Hi everyone, I'm Rob from Project Sandbox. In this video, we're going to look at how to start a new project in OpenShot. So before you actually even open up the program, there's a couple things you can do to make your life a whole bunch easier when you're actually editing videos. So the first thing that actually you can do to help your life out a little bit is to have really good folder organization. I know that this isn't a really exciting thing, but it does make your life a lot easier in the long run. So right here, I created a folder that can serve as an example of how to do this. So if I open it up, you can see within the folder, I have two uh, subfolders. One's called footage and one's called assets. In footage, you can see that I have video and audio footage. So in video, I have some video clips, all of which are Creative Commons from a site called Pexels. And then in audio, I have a Creative Commons song that I actually found on SoundCloud. In addition to this song, you'll notice that I have two links in here as well. These links serve as a reference for me at the end of the video when I'm done editing it. How to actually attribute the song properly, because this song requires that you attribute it appropriately. So just as a little tip, it's really helpful to put links to the website that you actually got Creative Commons items from. So, uh, going back to the main folder, you'll see I have this assets folder. Inside of there, I have a folder called images. So an assets folder is really good to have, um, maybe you have various titles that you wanna use or other elements that don't really fall under that footage category. And then within this main folder, it's normally a good place after you're done creating the video to save your final video project in this main folder. And then it's good to also save your open shot uh, file within this main folder because you have quick access to them. Um, the reason that you want to do all this folder management when you create a video is because these video programs will actually reference the folder all the time. So if for some reason your footage gets moved around, your video program won't know where to reference the footage anymore and you'll have to relink it up which just makes your life a little difficult so just doing these couple steps at the beginning is really helpful the next thing that's important to do when you actually create a video project is to be aware of the dimensions of the video clips that you're using so we can use this little image as an example of what i'm talking about so when you use video footage, it's always communicated in pixels. So way back when, when we would use DVDs or VHS, stuff like that, the pixel sizes were 720 by 480. Then we got high definition footage and we got this 1280 by 720 P uh, pixel sizes. Um, and then there was full high definition, which was 1920 by 1080. And now we're at the 4K mark, which is 3840 by 2160. It's important to know what your footage is in because that's what you'll want to edit it in. So if we look at some of the footage that I've already found, just by going into that folder, you can actually right click on your footage and hit properties. When you're in there, you'll see a screen appear. In details, you can actually see in pixels what your footage is. And it'll actually tell you the length of that footage as well. And then it'll even tell you your audio sample rate, which will come in handy. And then your frame rate as well. I'm aware you don't know what some of these terms are, or you may not know what some of those are. But just keep in mind, if you're ever curious about what your video clips you're actually using are, that's where you can find all that information. So just right click on the clip properties and then go into details and you can see all that information here. So now that we know that we have 1920 by 1080 footage, which if you remember from that image I just showed you is full high definition footage, we know how to actually set up our OpenShot document. 
So, bringing up OpenShot, we can see how the program's kind of laid out. So all that footage that we just created, we'll want to drag into this project files window right here. So you can do that pretty simply. I'm gonna make this a little smaller and move this over here just so you can see what it actually looks like. So to bring all this footage in really easily, I'm just gonna highlight it all just by clicking somewhere in my folder and making a text box. Um, if for some reason you had like a page worth of things, you can just click on your first item, hold down shift and click on your last item and it'll select all those objects as well. And then all you have to do is click and drag them into this window right here. And then you can see it populate. For doing audio clips or for doing images, it's the exact same process. So say I wanted to bring this audio clip in, you just click and drag it into that window. And then I can see it down here. And then for images, you can do the same thing as well. And then it'll be right here. All right, so the next step that we want to do to actually set up our footage so that it'll work for us really good is we want to tell the program uh, what all of our video clips actually are. Because after we finish the whole video and editing it, we'll want to put it all together in the proper way. You'll learn what that is in a couple videos. So in order to tell the program what the video is, you'll just want to click on this little film strip right here. You'll notice that it says choose profile. So if we click on that, we can see some of this information right here. So right now it says we're at high definition 720p. So that's that 1280 by 720 and then 30 frames per second. So if you remember what our video footage was, it was 1920 by 1080p and 29.97 frames per second. So we'll need to change that. So if you click on this uh, menu right here, you'll see a whole bunch of options that you can choose from for all the different types of video that exist really. So for us, we wanna choose 1080p but we wanna make sure we choose that 29.97 frames per second. So this will give us actually what our footage is in. After I hit close, we're using the correct profile. The only other thing that I wanna to mention to you in this video is just how to add these items to the timeline. It's actually a pretty simple process. So all you have to do to add any of these items to the timeline is just click and drag it and then you'll see that it gets added to the timeline and you can see that right here we can do the same for this one we can do that with the audio clip or we could even do it with our image and all of those items just get added that simply so that's what i have for you for this video if you would like to continue following along in the next video i'm going to talk about how to actually edit all these film clips and put them together I hope this video was useful for you and I look forward to you seeing me in the next video because I obviously won't see you. I realize that's a corny joke, but there you go. Um, thank you very much for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.